Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, welcome back to our third through fifth grade uh, life group or Sunday school, or whatever you want to call it. Um, hope you've had a good week. Hope that you're continuing to work hard in school, that you're learning and growing, um, making the effort you should make to glorify the Lord in your education. Now, if you haven't noticed, you may notice I've got a little guy down here with me, just yawned. He's, he's out of bottle. He's tired. Uh, but he was going to make a special appearance with Daddy. This is Benjamin Carson Calgar. Now, guys, I know being guys, we don't generally care about somebody else's baby. But he's hanging out with Daddy for the moment, so he's going to be with me as we do this. I will point out to raising him right, he's got his cowboy boots on and jeans because uh, one of my, my students got these for him, and they're amazing. And we appreciate it. We love them. Uh, great, great boots. He loves them. His favorite thing are his boots. Even if he, if he, if he just his diaper, he'd still want to wear his boots. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. He's a great kid. Um, he's got a great sense of fashion in that. I highly recommend if you don't have cowboy boots that you buy some because they're a great thing. But on to what we actually need to talk about today in terms of our lesson. And it's going to be in Acts chapter 13. You know, last couple weeks again we've been talking about the resurrection. And then we talked about uh, because of Easter, obviously, in that time of the year. And then we've talked about the ascension of Christ and uh, the calling of the apostles, the empowering of the Holy Spirit, how we all, upon salvation, received the Holy Spirit, were adopted into the family of God. Uh, and now today we're going to talk about the call uh, to missions, the call to take the gospel around the world. In Acts chapter 13, you will see uh, in verse 1 it says, Now there were these prophets and teachers in the church of Antioch, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius the Cyrenian, Manan, a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch from childhood, and Saul, who we know uh, today as Paul. While they were serving the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after they had fasted and prayed and placed their hands on them, they sent them off. And throughout the rest of, the, of Acts chapter 13, you see or you can read about the missionary journeys of Paul and Barnabas and some of the obstacles they face. Uh, and then as you go throughout the rest of the book of Acts, you'll read about the Apostle Paul in particular. Unfortunately, Paul and Barnabas do have a little bit of a falling out, uh, and it becomes Paul and Silas then. And you see these men going out and serving the Lord, uh, even in the conflicts that they face. And I want to challenge you guys today with some thoughts on this. And the first is that uh, the Lord may call you to be a missionary. Uh, and that's something... That as you grow older, as you go into your adult years in the next you know, six, seven, eight years or so, uh, you should consider what the Lord might have you to do in terms of missions and whether or not He might call you to go and get some kind of formal training in, in theology uh, and, uh, and studying the Bible and then go to be a missionary somewhere uh, around the world. Uh, there's cultures and places that, that still need to hear the gospel and, and places and cultures that could use more churches and more Christian influence. Uh, you know, here in the U.S., we have, especially in some locations, we have, in the South, we have churches on every street corner. Um, and there are some places here in the West and maybe up in New England that, that you know, it, it's fewer. But the thing is, there there are a lot of churches and gospel witness, uh, biblical gospel witness here in the U.S. and in the Western world. The Lord may call you to take the gospel someplace uh, where you don't have that. And he may call you uh, to some place that's challenging as you read through the book of Acts and Paul and Barnabas and later Paul and Silas. Uh, these men face a lot of opposition and they face a lot of hardship as they take the gospel uh, to the places the Lord calls them to go. Not everybody is going to appreciate uh, a gospel witness. Uh, you're going to find opposition. There's governments today that, that don't like the gospel. There's people and people groups today who don't like the gospel. Uh, because it challenges the way they think and the way they want to live, and it, it challenges their power. Uh, there's a lot of folks out there who believe that the only life that matters is this life, and so you kind of get all that you can get, uh, and they're not worried about eternity in the ways that they should be. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys, as you should know from being at church, Sunday school, uh, life is more than just what you see around you. There, there is an eternal life, and uh, it's important that people understand the gospel and the the need for salvation, what Christ did for them on the cross, and their, their need uh, for the forgiveness of sins, and that they understand that. So I want to encourage you and challenge you to consider that the Lord may call you to be a missionary to some foreign field someday to be able to take the gospel. But secondly, I want to challenge you to be a missionary in the place where you are. Uh, 
none of you guys are in the families that, that you are in by accident. You don't have the friends, so to speak, that you have by accident. I know you're not in school right now in a physical locale, but back in the fall you should be. Um, and you're not there by accident. The Lord has a reason and a will for the places that He has you. And I would challenge you, be witnesses where you are and to the people around you. Uh, be a witness in your, in your word, that is, share the gospel, tell others about Jesus, do it respectfully, do it tactfully and lovingly, uh, but tell others about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Secondly, do it with the way that you live uh, as well. Live the Christian life. Seek to be what you are. Uh, one of the things that's been challenging me over the years is I've studied a lot in American Indian history, uh, Western history, but in particular American Indian history and American Indian culture and religions. And I remember it struck me, it struck me several years ago in a book I was reading on the Comanche, how they were flabbergasted at white man's religion and how a white man would worship uh, on a Sunday, but Monday through Saturday their faith didn't matter to them. They, they didn't seem to think that the God existed, so to speak, outside of the church house. And that only in the church house was where you could, in a sense, know God or, or where it mattered. And for the Comanche, this was strange because for them, the whole world was supernatural. Everything around them, there were spirits and uh, the world itself was a fire, uh, on fire, so to speak, with the spiritual. And I, I want to challenge you, that's the way to some degree it should be with a Christian. It's not that we see demons in every bush or, or angels in every bush. Uh, and around every corner, but it is the case that our faith should affect not just what we do on Sundays, but what we do Monday through uh, Saturday as well. The little guy here is getting a little bit fussy, so if you'll excuse me a second, he's going to go to his stroller, and he's going to wait on Daddy because he's tired, and he doesn't know it, but he's ready for a nap. So live the faith, uh, preach the faith in the places where God has you. Live the Christian life as you know uh, and as you understand Scripture and as the Lord leads you. And the empowerment of the Holy Spirit as we talked about last week. Do the things that we know to do both in word and deed. Be a witness for Christ. All right, have a good week. And I am going to shut off here as, as Benji gets a little bit more frustrated with Daddy for taking too long because he'd like to go take a nap. Guys, thanks for joining us. All right, hope again you have a good week. Uh, and as we roll into summer, that you have a great summer.